Julie Kay helping you find your way through grief and loss. And today is on my fifth tip that's on my bookmark. And I've been going through the, these different tips over the last uh, five weeks or so. This one is called Take It One Day at a Time. Take life one day at a time. Take your life-changing loss and how you deal with it how you cope with it, how you move through it one day at a time. Okay, so that is what I'm talking about today on this video. Um, I want to acknowledge a very, very, very popular prayer called the Serenity Prayer, which you've probably heard of. And a friend gave me this book recently. It's so smooth and soft. Um, but of course, she knew I was all about the Serenity Prayer and how I used that in the circle of control as the foundation of my life coaching, what it's done for me and it's helping others as I use this as a foundational principle. So I want to give credit to who they believe wrote the Serenity Prayer. It's not for sure, but Reinhold Niebuhr um, wrote this approximately in 1932. It was first used with Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm not going to give the whole history on that right now, but I just want to mention his name because they believe that's who wrote the Serenity Prayer originally. But it just became so popular that sometimes it's hard to even recognize who first wrote it, right? But like it says here, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. But today I want to go further in that because really... This is the full prayer right here. And that's this is what most people just quote. Okay, but here's the full prayer. And it's read in definitely um, certain AA meetings, but it's also a very um, popular prayer for, for Celebrate Recovery and other 12-step um, programs such as that. So it does say the, what we just read, but it also says right after that, living one day at a time, Enjoying one moment at a time. It goes on to say, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you, that God, will make all things right if I surrender to his will. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you, with the Lord, forever in the next life. That's the full prayer. So I totally wanted to acknowledge this today because of the topic of what I'm saying. Take it one day at a time. So he emphasized this, this right after the kind of the acknowledgement of I need to recognize what's out of my control and let it go and release it and be at peace, learn to be at peace about it. And But I also need to recognize what's in my control and asking God for the wisdom to know the difference and the courage to change the things I can. Because control and change go hand in hand. So we're talking about a good kind of control. So right after he, the, in the prayer, he says living, like he's basically saying we need to live one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. I like that emphasis on enjoying one moment at a time. We're not going to always enjoy everything. But if we can learn to enjoy even the hard things in life, all things in life, we're going to do well. So I really think it that this principle is acknowledged in this serenity prayer and I have two other verses I want to I want to refer to and that is Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 but I want to encourage you if you want to take this principle seriously to read verses 25 through verse 34 of Matthew chapter 6 so I'm not going to read all of it although I'm tempted to because it really this whole concept is very much enveloped in this passage that Jesus quoted. So I'm going to just mention a couple parts of that. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, he says, or what you will wear. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than even the birds of the air? Yes, you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in the image of God. Um, 
so you are definitely more important than the birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Who of you, who of who am I to think that my worrying is going to add on any value, any add an hour to my life? It's not going to add more time on. It's not going to, you know, 20, we all have 24 hours a day, right? So it's not going to add time on. And our worrying doesn't really add. It doesn't really give us any value, yet we do it. So we need to recognize that worrying and not, not give place to it. Instead, what I say, turn it into a prayer of faith and exercise our faith and, you know, change that over to healthy thinking and productive thinking, if you want to call it that. So here's verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So I always look at every verse up and um, put the word lexicon into Google along with the verse to get the original and to look at that. And then sometimes I click on the original Greek word to see more of the meaning beyond that. So the word for worry there means don't be anxious. Don't care for. It even means don't, don't even care. <laughs> In a sense, don't care about tomorrow. Um, for tomorrow will for care for itself. Um, be anxious. Don't be anxious. Um, as we know, our, our other verse that I commonly quote, which is, um, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. So this means don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't care for um, tomorrow. For tomorrow, work, care for, or be have its own anxieties. Each day has enough trouble of its own has sufficient trouble of its own. Enough or sufficient means the same thing. And the word for trouble, um, some versions say has enough evil. Oh, no, that's a different verse I'm going to talk about. Sorry. But this word for trouble here means wickedness or evil or bad. Okay, trouble, evil, wickedness, or bad. Okay, so that right before that, Right before that is another popular, well, it's a really good verse for if you want to please God and you want to seek his will, this is a really important verse right before that, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Again, go back and read this whole passage so you get the whole thing of what God's, Jesus is saying here and what God's saying here. I really think that that seeking first his kingdom and then not worrying must go hand in hand, right? Because he says, don't worry right after that. Seek first the kingdom, seek first to please God, to obey God, to walk in faith, which is what pleases him, to, to follow his leading for your life, to follow his word first, and then your specific calling that he has on you, the gifts and callings he's got for you. That is right before don't worry about tomorrow. Now, you could think that contradicts itself, but it, it doesn't because the word doesn't do that. And, but really, you know, I could go on and on. It doesn't mean you don't make plans. It doesn't mean, um, you know, that we don't think or have vision for the future. We have to because nothing, most everything in this world wouldn't exist if people didn't have a vision and a plan to go into the future, Right. So we have to get what, what Jesus is saying here, to not worry, not be anxious, not be in a negative, unhealthy mode about it. Oh no, what, what's going to happen? And really, it's, it's, it's about predicting negative that's going to happen in your life. And don't do that because there is evil in this world and it's going to have it already. We don't need to add to that. So the way, I, what I would say, what I always say is let's not add to our grief because by worrying about tomorrow or going too far ahead or thinking too far ahead, or how am I going to deal with this? Oh my gosh, I'm a mess right now. What if I'm even more of a mess tomorrow? What if I'm even more sad or in more heartache, more depressed tomorrow? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, all that's going to do is add on. And I think that's definitely where the word's telling us don't, don't live in that. Um, I even go to, so far as to say, you know, well, let me say this too. We can overwhelm ourselves by doing this. We can 
make ourselves overwhelmed or add on to where we're already overwhelmed by jumping too far ahead of where life is going to take us. What are we going to do without our spouse? What are we going to do without our parent, our child, whoever it is? Yeah, it's a life-changing loss. It's serious. I am not at all minimizing that. And nobody, don't listen to anybody if they do minimize it. What I'm doing is saying, with where you're at already that's so hard, let's not add on to that. Let's not make it harder or more overwhelming to cause you to be more depressed or anxious or um, fearful or any of those things because that's not what the Lord has for us. He wants us to walk in his peace that passes all understanding, not as the world gives.